I'm a Teletubby. Hello, Mark Isfeld, and welcome to the 8th episode of Mark Isfeld Television. This week we have Eric doing something about facial hair. Hey, MITV! Eric here. Movember, that second growing season of the year when men grow facial hair for prostate cancer awareness. But why don't women grow facial hair? Well, during puberty, men make this thing called androgen, a hormone which darkens and thickens hair, making for darker beards, armpit hair and down there on your legs. But if I don't cut my hair, will it grow forever? Well, there's this thing called the anagen phase, which is the growth phase of your hair. After about six years, it stops growing. Then it begins to fall out. So why aren't our eyebrows as long as our head hair? That's because the anagen phase of our eyebrows is much shorter than the anagen phase on our head hair, which makes it stop growing much faster, but mutations do occur which result in a man who has two and a half inch eyebrow hairs. When we age, why does hair go gray? Ask Mr. Kunert. And as always, back to- Hola! Julian, what are you doing here? Uh, I challenge you to an MITV Movember off. Okay, three, two, one! <laughs> yeah! Thanks, Eric. Now on to Sam Merrick with a segment. In Canada, we have trees, but we also have musical talent. It's felt Alyssa Gaga and Amelia Mann recently won the Great Canadian Song Race. I have an interview with Alyssa Gaga. Let's go see it now. Hi, I'm here with Alyssa Gaga, who is the winner of... It's Gaga. Alyssa Gaga. You should know that by now. It's going to be trending on Twitter soon. Oh my god. Hashtag Gaga. Are you Alyssa Gaga? Did you win? Oh, I, I did. heard you won the Great Canadian Song Race. I did. Oh man, can I get your autograph? Oh, uh, sorry, you're in. Oh, you're in. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I, did, I didn't realize I'm that. Sorry, I was just so excited. Like, like, a, like oh my god. Like, wow. Okay, wait, I gotta go. Autograph. Later. Uh, wow, I didn't know we were with a celebrity. Oh, yeah. So, uh, your song was called Paradox, right? And can you tell us a little bit about your song? Um, our song, Paradox, I wrote with a bunch of amazing people, which was Angela Jansen, Joey Clarkson, Amelia Mann, and Ryan from Mother Mother. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty much about two friends that have been friends for a long time, but they both have feelings for each other and they want to make it more than friends, so it's just taking that step towards making it into a relationship. And how was the process of writing it? Like, how did you go about writing it? Um, well, the Great Canadian Song Race was a uh, thing over three weekends, so the first weekend we would write the song and we pretty much sat in a closet down at the Comox Rec Center for about five hours. How big was this closet? I need to know mentally. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty small. <laughs> we were pretty much just huddled around a table. And I forgot to tell you, I voted for you. It was oh. so cool. I got online and it was just... Oh, still. <laughs> The next weekend we met up with our producers and recorded the song and then the final weekend the votes were tallied and the winner was announced. What else do you get from winning the Great Canadian Song Race? Um, we get a whole bunch of guest certificates for around Courtney and Comox, get more studio time at Thailand Music Media Productions and hopefully we'll be getting a music video made. And uh, what happened when you found out, like how did you celebrate or were you really excited or? Well, I was at work, but my teammates texted me and left me a message. So I was in my back room listening to this message, and they sounded really sad. So I'm like, oh, dang, we didn't win. And then they started, <laughs> they just started screaming. They're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we won. So I let out the biggest scream ever, and it's probably caught on security cameras at Target now, which is awesome. Nice. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Sam. Now, last Friday, Michel Chiquanine spoke at our school about his experiences being a child soldier. We have an exclusive interview with him now. Eric? Hi, I'm here with... Michel Chiquanine. And can you briefly describe your story? 
I was a um, former child soldier from the Democratic Republic of Congo. At the age of five, I was abducted and I was drugged and manipulated into killing my best friend as a way of joining an army. But thankfully, I managed to escape uh, by the help of so many other organizations. My family eventually made our way to Canada as refugees. Why should people care about this? Like, what would you say to someone who says that this doesn't apply to them at all and it's just in this third world country only? Right. And to be very honest with you, every issue in the world connects at some point. Um, the issue of child soldiers is connected to the issue of poverty. The issue of poverty is connected to the issue of lack of education. And why does poverty exist in, in Congo, for example? Poverty exists in the Congo because global institutions from North America impose laws that, that make sure that a lot of countries in, in, the, in the southern part of the world stay in poverty. So Congo is just, is, Congo's poverty basically is a reality of institutions from North America like the World Bank or, um, or institutions that our parents pay money to, right? Our own governments impose laws that make sure that these countries are in poverty. As a result, you get, you get poverty, you get conflicts. And when there's conflicts, there's going to be child soldiers, right? So it becomes this cycle that just happens every single day. We might not feel like we're impacted by this. But by us buying a cell phone, for example, you know, a cell phone or a laptop, and think of how many iPhones come out every single year, right? And we buy these cell phones, and the mineral that's used in the cell phones comes from Congo. It comes from companies that, that we pay money to, to make these cell phones, paying rebel soldiers to fight over mining towns and mining areas. And these rebel soldiers capture children, and they use them as weapons of war. And so we're buying the cell phones, but the, where, they, where they're coming from, yeah, we might not know where they're coming from, but we are actually in, we're actually perpetuating that war itself because we're giving those companies money mm -hmm. and not telling them to do it in the right way. Yeah. Okay, and how can people help or stop what's happening right now? Uh, I think the first thing everyone has to do is first learn. I would recommend for if you if people are interested in learning about conflict minerals or how that's involved, um, there's a website called Raise Hope for Congo. Um, it's a great website. It tells you how a mineral goes from war zone into our cell phones and how we can stop it. Um, so that's one. So learning about organizations that are working in these issues. Uh, an organization that works in the issue of child soldiers, for example, is an organization that was started by Romeo Delaire, who was the Canadian general in charge of the peacekeeping mission in uh, Rwanda during the Rwandan genocide. And he started an organization called Child Soldier Initiative. So that's a couple ways that you could do it. And then it's the second thing of doing a concrete action is actually doing things like fundraising. Um, something that your school does so, so well is you guys fundraise to build a school in China, for example. And so you're giving an opportunity to a lot of kids there who have never gotten the opportunity to go to school to have a chance of, of a better life. Uh, because you're giving them an opportunity to, to learn, to read and write, something that we take for granted but there is so important because it gives you basically it's almost between life and death, right? Because now you're given an opportunity to read a contract. You can sign your name. These are things that we think are just so easy here, but in other parts of the world, they're not, and they're, they're so important. So those are just a couple ways that you can get involved and do something to make a difference. Do you have any comments at all? Well, I was just going to say that, you know, your school is, is pretty amazing. The girls go global. The girls are pretty amazing for what they do. And, and Jane Morris is an amazing teacher. The fact that you guys are able to engage so many people in this capacity is, is something that shouldn't be taken for granted. And I'm, I'm proud and I'm glad and I'm happy every time I come to a community that's so engaged in this capacity. So I'm so happy and glad that you guys are doing this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now on to the end of the episode! Congratulations to last week's winner of Instagram Pick of the Week, which was Spooksfeld. This week's Instagram hashtag is... Ice Cold Stash! Send us your stashes! Stay frosty, Marcus Feld! <laughs>